shall not steal. Amen, Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen, Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we have only repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And with the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, 
for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. The Word of the Lord. through the sea 
and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same <coughs> spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters as some of them did, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think that you are standing, watch out you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. The word of the Lord.
Now I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Or it is sort of empty territory 
It's been said that the wine business, a winery, is the best way to turn a large fortune into a small one. <laughs> and the reason for that is it takes so long. Those grapes, those vines have to grow for three years before they produce any fruit. Fig trees are exactly the same way. They have to grow about three years before they start producing fruit. And at some point, the, the owner of the piece of ground that's in Jesus' parable said, it's time for this fig tree to produce some figs, and it happened. And he said, just cut it down. I don't want it taking up the space. And the gardener, Jesus, the gardener said, let me work with it a little bit. Let me dig around it, put some manure on it, feed it, fertilize it, and let's see what it does then. And if we give it that chance, then maybe it will produce fruit. If it doesn't, we'll cut it down. Okay, this tree is in a pickle. It's got to produce fruit or it gets cut down. There's no third option offered. One of those two things is going to happen. So this little tree has to decide what it's going to do. And in a strange kind of way, what's at stake for that tree is actually repentance. Remember that word means to turn around. And that's what this tree's got to do. It's got to turn around. It's got to turn from a fruitless way of being in the world toward a fruitful way of being in the world. Same thing with that little tree in the backyard. It's got to go from having no growth to having new growth. It's that matter of turning. And that, of course, you know, the thing about this parable is that once it once it's out there, there's no escaping it. You can't get away from it. And Jesus is very, very clearly kind of pointing the finger at us if the gospel is indeed transcendent. That that's what's on our plate too as we go through this period of time is repentance. That is turning away from barrenness places of no growth toward new growth, turning away from fruitlessness toward fruitfulness. And that means turning away, I mean, you can look at prayer for today, you know, turning away from all the things that, that pull and tug and entice and generally get us going in a direction we don't want to be in to get ourselves as the center of the universe uh, to be run kind of by our egos rather than by the larger picture. In other words, they get us thinking more about ourselves than being focused on the source of light and life and love and what that might mean for us and what we might be able to do in the world because of that light and life and love. So it's turning away from an old fruitless way of being towards a fruitful one, towards one that produces fruits for the kingdom and for ourselves and for each other. What is there in your life right now that's fruitless? What is there that's kind of barren? It's not growing? What is there in your life that is sort of at a dead end, that has exhausted itself, that needs to be let go of? What is the new growth that you feel like you need to be whole? What fruit is God calling you to produce in this time?
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In this season of penitence and self reflection, let us pray by saying, forgive our sins. For our church, this diocese, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Morris, our bishop, and Paul, our rector. Mercifully fill your people with the spirit of your unity. Forgive our sins. For this nation and all nations, especially those experiencing civil strife. Establish among them that peace which is the fruit of righteousness. Forgive our sins. For our leaders, especially the President of the United States, the Governor of Louisiana, and all elected and appointed leaders, grant them the wisdom to promote the well-being of all people. Forgive our sins. For those who are ill, and who are suffering from any infirmity, especially Rick, Helen, Beverly, Ron and Dean, Jody, Kitty, Carla, Jerry, Betsy, Lynn, Linda, and Jen. Give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs. Forgive our sins. For all who have died in certain hope of the resurrection and eternal life. Especially Gus, Tommy, Sam, and Louise. And for those who love them. Grant that our death we may enter with joy into your eternal kingdom. Forgive our sins. We give thanks for the presence in our midst of James Mills, Mayfield, the fourth, Nicholas Tucker, Will Anderson, Lucy Miller, Deborah Corjo, and J.P. Miller, who celebrate their birthday this week. And we pray for God's richest blessings upon them in the coming year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace. Forgive our sins. Hear us, O Lord. For various is your kindness and mercy. We earnestly implore your divine. Forgive and forgive our sins. For peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to the apostles, Peace I give to you. My own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Thanks.
please be seated if you can. Uh, good morning and welcome to all of you. It's a delight to see you here on this third Sunday in the season of Lent. And uh, we continue that pilgrimage toward Easter. Uh, the vestry will be meeting today following this service. And I guess let's go on the park. We haven't been in there in a while, so we can sit on comfy chairs. Uh, do please take a look at the announcements, especially about the trash and trash. Well, it's not a trash and trash sale. It's the treasure sale, uh, which is coming up. There's no trash in it. It's coming up April 1 and 2. And it, we are ready now to be able to accept what you would like to bring for that sale. So as you know, what you do is you look around to find the things you would like to put in the sale. You bring it to church. It gets all set up by Margie and her crew. And then on April 1 and 2, you come back. You go to the sale and you buy someone else's things and you take them home. And that way everything kind of balances out. So anyway, that's coming up. And also please see the note about grace baskets, uh, which is such an important outreach for us. This year, uh, we're going to do something a little different during Holy Week in that we're going to have a, a prayer vigil for the church and for the world. This is a time for us to pray for our families, our friends, for the ministries of this church, what is happening here, for the people who give themselves to, to making this place move along as it does. Um, and it's a time to pray for the world. And God knows the world needs it right now. Uh, the horrors continue to multiply in Ukraine, and there doesn't seem to be any way to stop it. Although I will say, just anecdotally, being outside the other evening, I've noticed that if you say the word Putin out loud, birds will stop singing. <laughs> okay, it's just, it just happened. I can't promise it's going to happen for you, but it might. Uh, but it, this, is, this is a critical time. This is a, a dangerous time and a critical time for everyone on this planet. And so this is a time for us to be in prayer for that, to give ourselves who we are into the presence of God um, for what God longs for for us. So, out in the north, the way we've done this, it will start at the end of the Maundy Thursday service, so about 8 o'clock on Maundy Thursday, <coughs> and we'll go around to the beginning of the Good Friday service at 12 noon on Friday. And all that time is divided into hour and a half blocks of time. And I'd like to ask you, if you are inclined to do so, to sign up for a block of time. You can pray here at the church if you want. You can pray at home, uh, especially if it's very early in the morning. You may wish to do that. Uh, you can, we can have as many people as we want in each little block of time. But the idea is to fill the evening with our prayer. Uh, you know, at the end of Monday Thursday, Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane, and the disciples couldn't stay awake. This is our chance to stay awake at least some and be in prayer with Jesus for what's going on in our world. So the sign-up is out there in the narthex along with the sign-up for Easter flowers. If you would take a look at that, maybe on your way out. Are there any other announcements from the to hold today? Once again, it's great to see you walk in love. Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice.
You have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. For through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow now before the Lord. Look mercifully on this your family, Almighty God, that by your great goodness they may be governed and preserved evermore. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.